customizations and application studio, a lot of the magic is going to happen through events and they're how we bring interactivity and automation through our UIs. So you're going to think of it as basically like a cause and effect system behind the user actions. So when someone clicks a button, enters text or loads a page, these actions can also, well, they're triggered by logic behind the scenes. So that's what we're going to dive into. So what is triggering these events and also the events themselves. So again, events are just the actions that trigger or perform a function. And our events that we have here um, are going to be grouped by trigger type. And the ones I'm going to be going over today are the component types. And again, we have the list of the component types, which is going to be control, grid, page, tree, and window. And I'm going to go more into depth into those on the next slide. But first, I did want to just show you what happens. I'm sure we've covered this in past bunch of lines, just, just a little refresher. What happens when you're creating a new event? You're going to press this little button on the corner that I just highlighted in yellow. And it's going to open a page like this. Um, and each event that you create is going to start technically with no trigger. It's going to have this no trigger node. And you can have an event that goes based off of no trigger. But again, I'm gonna be talking to you about the component triggers, but this is how a event is gonna look every time you create a new one. And then on the right side, you're gonna see the properties of it and you could hit the drop down, and it'll show you different types you have and then the different hooks. And it'll also show you types, hooks, and then it's gonna show you a target ID. The first type we're gonna talk about is gonna be control. So control is a specific type of component, often referring to input-based elements. So to go over some of these hooks that we have here, um, and again, just to reiterate, when you press on the hook dropdown, these are the ones that are gonna show up. So then the first one we'll talk about is on blur. This event fires when an input field, like a text box, basically loses focus. In other words, when a user either clicks outside of the field or tabs out of it. The name blur, it actually comes from like JavaScript's DOM events and it's essentially the opposite of focus. So again, when you're now no longer in that text box. So this is an example of one of the events that I created. It's a very like short, small example. It's only to show you the trigger. Um, I couldn't get into more in-depth examples just because of the limited time we have. But again, this is the control. You'll see it on top. On, um, on the right-hand side in the picture, it'll say text comments because that is the text box ID that I'm targeting. And then on blur again is the hook. And I basically, when I press out of that text box, I just wanted it to show me a message. And as you can see here, if I'm on the job entry page on the bottom right corner where it says job comments, I wrote testing on blur. And unfortunately, I forgot to add my little mouse there, but like, let's say I had just finished typing and then I moved my mouse outside of it and I am pressing on something else, this is what should come up. And you could, again, trigger many other events, but for the sake of my example, I just wanted to show you that it'll pop up this little text box and it'll just say, don't forget to save your work. Like, don't forget to save your comment. That was just a small example, but it can be very useful for other things. The uh, on create hook is, a trigger is a trigger that <laughs> triggers an event when a component is first initialized and that would be useful for setup logic so when you're loading default values and stuff and then the on click and double click again is going to be used when you're pressing buttons a grid row or a card and then on panel card collapsed and expanded again those is just when you collapse and expand a panel card so those are going to be the start of your event and when that action occurs is what's going to trigger the rest of your event. Down here, we finally have the target that I that you didn't see in the last slide. But again, when you press down on this target box, it's going to show you all of the target IDs that you are able to choose. And this is going to be dependent on the form, also the type of component as well. So the target ID can be most of the time many any UI elements, such as a button ID, a grid ID, page name or a panel card ID. Um, but again, it, it's cool because it, it automates that for you. You don't really have to assume which, which target you have to choose or which one you can. It'll give you the list of what it is. 
but it's also up to you to know the ID of what exactly you want to target. So, and then this little button down here, the allow interaction during events, it determines whether the application is paused as the event occurs or if the user can keep using it while it's happening. Again, just depends on what exactly you're trying to do, but it can be a pretty useful button. So now my next, my next component that I'm gonna be talking about is my second trigger grid. So grids are used for displaying and interacting with tabular data. So think of them like dynamic tables where the user can edit, view, or select rows of information. This is its own section because it's not gonna be in the control like on click. You can't choose the grid as the target. They made their own trigger for it. So the grid is gonna have after paste, before paste, and on click as its own hooks. You can actually copy and paste from some of the updatable grids that you do have in Epicor. So for example, I am in the GEO control maintenance page and I have this grid right here. And if you press on the left top corner of this little grid, this little box, um, and you right click it, it'll show you this paste update or copy options. And the paste update is obviously where these hooks, these hooks come into play. Obviously before paste is gonna be when you press paste, but it'll be before the data actually gets pasted into it. And then the after paste is gonna occur after the data is already pasted into it. What I did was I created another example and I have, again, on this left picture is gonna be the event itself where my um, type is the grid, my hook is on click, and then my target is customers. And that is the name, the, the ID of the grid. My column is gonna be the specific, again, cell that I want to, like when I press on that, it's gonna trigger the rest of the event. So again, I just wanted it to show a message. Um, so as you can see here, I have my customers. And then when I press on KM cust five, which is my customer five, when I press on that with my cursor, my little pop-up just says grid on click works. There's only two hooks for this one and they're pretty simple. Again, on closed and on closing. So pages are gonna be like your slide out, um, slide out pages and other kind of tabs in your, in your form that you're in. So for my example, I just went into job entry again. And when I create a new job, I have this pop-up, like this slide out panel that comes and it gives me an optional quick job little section here. But let's say I was like, oh, never mind. I don't want to create a job anymore. I just press the X button. And then again, this pop-up comes up and says, okay, goodbye, thank you. And you could adjust these messages or adjust the event to your liking. But just for the sake of showing you how the trigger works, that was just my little message. But I would say a good note is on closed is going to, which is what I use, is this pop-up is going to happen once the page is closed out. And then on closing is going to be as the page is closing out. So that's something good to remember because for on closing, a good use for that would be like a last chance to stop the user or validate the closing. So that way you don't miss any data or anything gets like deleted, but then on close is gonna be great for follow-up actions again, after the page is completely gone. So yeah, that was pretty simple, nothing crazy. The next event is gonna be my tree control, playing all of them. So on before expand all, this event is just gonna fire just before the tree is gonna expand all of the nodes. And again, here I am in the customer, form and you have the, the tree on the left hand side highlighted in yellow and these are all of the nodes and the um, tree like all of the folders categories and records in here so again before they expand you would use the on before expand all and then when you drag and drop items into the trees and then on specific node expand or select so again if you're going to go into customer detail and you're like oh i want a pop-up that says something or I want to trigger something else. That's when you would use this tree type and one of these hooks. And then my last one is going to be my window type trigger. And these are gonna be um, triggered by actions that happen inside windows or pop-ups like dialog boxes or detailed forms. So they're great for managing data entry, broadcasting messages across components and 
handling what happens when the window opens or interacts with the user. So similar to the others, after paste, before paste, um, when you paste something into a window or after you paste something, it'll trigger the event. On broadcast is a little different. This hook actually listens for messages sent across components or screens. So um, you can use this one to refresh data when another screen updates it, react to actions triggered by other users or systems, or it maybe even dynamically update fields without reopening windows. That's the idea of being able to use on broadcast. Um, and then on load, we have an example here that's already done in Epicor's application studio already, which I also forgot to mention that they already will have a bunch of um, essentially canned events that you can look at yourself to have to even get a better idea of what these triggers can be used for, how Epicor even uses them, just because I was giving you like smaller examples of, you know, how, just generally how they work. But if you go and look through here, events, components, and then you um, open these folders, it would give you the list of the ones they already have. Unfortunately, page entry, I haven't really seen any in those, but I know control grid and window, as you can see here, do have some. So for the window, I open form unload and it shows you the trigger was window unload. And then it basically initializes the whole form for you. Um, and this is a canned one. So this is the one that happens automatically. But, and uh, another thing to mention that for windows, you do not have a target ID because it does target the whole window. And it says it, it knows what window <laughs> you are targeting. So there's no need to put a target ID into that. <laughs> <laughs>